In the previous lecture, we talked about uh, the first normal form and uh, boys chord normal form. In this lecture, we'll talk about uh, 2NF and 3NF. To understand 2NF, first uh, we'll concentrate on partial dependencies. Uh, let us see the definition of a partial dependency. Given a functional dependency x then y, where x and y are uh, subsets of the attributes of a schema R, uh, we say that uh, y is partially dependent on x if there exists a proper subset z of x such that z functionally determines y that means y is functionally determined determined by x at the same time a part of it is also functionally determining y directly if it is the case we say that the y is partially dependent on x or x then y is a partial dependency. Given a schema, we say that the schema is in a second normal form or satisfies the second normal form if for every attribute a of r it should satisfy a, one of the following conditions. Either a should be a prime attribute or it is part of some key or a is not partially dependent on a candidate key. So if a satisfies if any of these conditions that is again either it appears a, in a candidate key or it is not partially dependent on a candidate key. If it happens for every attribute A then we call the schema to be in second normal form and the entire database is in second normal form if every schema satisfies the second normal form conditions. Or putting it in, in another way every non-prime attribute shall not partially depend on candidate keys. Again every non-prime attribute shall not depend partially on candidate keys. If it satisfies, we call it uh, the schema is to be in second normal form. We will see an example actually how uh, this can be observed. Let uh, R with the A, B, C, D are the four attributes uh, consist of a schema with uh, the set of functional dependencies B then C and D then A. Uh, these are the functional dependencies that are defined on R. Now let us see check whether uh, the schema is in uh, 2NF or not. To understand this first we need to identify the keys. Again uh, uh, from the function dependencies we can observe that BD is going to determine C, BD is going to determine A, BD is going, going to determine B and BD is going to determine D. So BD together is determining all the attributes. And it is minimal because uh, B is determining C and D is determining A. Without B or without D, we cannot generate the other attribute C or A. So BD is minimal with respect to the property and hence uh, BD is a key. And is it the only key? Yes, because uh, none of the combinations of the keys shall contain uh, C or A because C is not going to determine anything. A is not going to determine anything. So only attributes that determines uh, all the attributes is BD and hence BD is the only key. But again, uh, a more theoretical approach to verify that BD is the only key, we need to go for all the possible combinations of uh, 2 power 4 combinations, A, B, C, D. Four attributes are there, 2 power 4 combinations. For each combination, we have to check whether it forms a key or not. So that is a theoretical process, but uh, in a shortcut, I am identifying the key. BD is the only key. Now, once I identify the key, then uh, for each function dependency, I have to check whether it satisfies the condition or not. And uh, if I take D then A, if I take D then A, A is not a prime attribute because BD is a key, so A is not part of the prime attributes. A, D, A is not a prime attribute and uh, one more thing is D is part of the key. D is a proper subset of BD. So a proper subset of key is determining A and uh, A is not functional dependent and A is not a prime, a prime attribute. So now this fails the conditions of the second normal form just we have seen. So the function dependency D then A because of this it is not in second normal form. We can confirm that R is not in second normal form. So this is how we will check the uh, existence of the second normal form or not. This has to be checked for every function dependency. Since it fails, if it fails one for one function dependency, it is enough to say that it is not in second normal form. So once we identify that the, this is not in second normal form, the next question is 
how do we decompose the schema so that it satisfies the second normal form for that one simple process that uh, we uh, do here is you form the schemas for each of the function dependency that is given and uh, just remove the right hand side attributes of all the function dependencies from the original schema R and then uh, form these schemas into smaller schemas. So in this case what I am doing BC is uh, one uh, schema, DA is one schema and uh, original schema is consisting of ABCD and the right hand side parts are C comma A. If I remove C comma A from ABCD I got BD. So BD is one schema, DA is one schema and BC is another schema and these three schemas put together uh, they are in a second normal form. Why? Because none of them, uh, none of the functional dependencies holding on each of the schemas is a partial dependency because only single attributes are there, there is no question of partial dependency arising. And uh, one more important observation here is that uh, this is lossless. Why? Because the condition satisfies BDDA. If you take BDDA, D is in the intersection of both and D is determined A. So that satisfies the conditions of uh, lossless joint decomposition, that part. Once this is lossless, then if I combine BDA and BDA, BC again, B is in the common uh, attribute and B then C is there, so that combination is also lossless. So altogether, all the three combinations uh, put together, they become lossless and uh, B then C holds, D then A holds, individual and the uh, schemas. So the entire uh, uh, set of schemas are in second normal form, which is lossless as well as dependency preserving. Now we talk about third normal form. Uh, let R be a schema and let uh, F is a set of functional dependencies that are defined on R and uh, let X be set of subset of R, some set of attributes which is subset of R and A is a single attribute. Then R is said to be in third normal form if for every functional dependency of the form X then A where X is a set of attributes and uh, A is a single attribute. So for every set of such function set of functional dependencies of the form x then a it has to satisfy any of the three conditions following three conditions either a belongs to x in that case x then a is a trivial functional dependency or x is a super key uh, that means x contains a key or a belongs to some key some candidate key so if any of the three conditions satisfies then we say that for every functional dependency then we say that r is in third normal form and uh, obviously uh, uh, databases in third normal form if every schema satisfies uh, the third normal form conditions we will see an example here uh, let us consider the schema r with a b c d four attributes and uh, the set of functional dependencies are given a then b b c then d and uh, a then c with the set of functional dependencies given hey, let us try to identify the key uh, by the same process a is determining b a is determining c and uh, if I use the union rule, A determines BC um, and BC determines D holds. So A determines D holds. So A is determining B, C and D as well. So A, A is a key because A is minimal. And uh, is it the only key? Yes, because none of the attributes, BC is determining D, but BC cannot determine A in any sense. Similarly, uh, individually C cannot do anything and D cannot determine anything. So A is the only key that exists on this schema with respect to the set of functional dependencies. And uh, if I go for the checking of the third normal form, if I take uh, the functional dependency BC then D, uh, D is not part of left hand side BC, so it is not trivial and BC is not a key and uh, D is not part of any key because only key is there A, so D is not part of any key. So this violates all the three conditions, none of the three conditions holds, so BC then D violates 3 and F. And uh, this is how we can test whether the schema is in th third normal form or not. And again, how do we decompose the schema so that it is in third normal form? Just a simple observation here, if I decompose it into two parts, ABC and BCD, uh, it satisfies three norm third normal form because if uh, for ABC, a is the key and uh, for BCD, BC is the key. So this satisfies the um, second condition of the third normal form. And uh, which is lossless because the common intersection is BC. BC is determining D, so lossless. 
dependency preserving as well. A then B holds, A then C holds, and B C then D holds on the second schema. So it is lossless and uh, dependency preserving. But we'll see an algorithm, actually a process, which will uh, we can so that we can convert the given schemas into the third normal form shortly. Not only that, there is one more important observation here. Uh, that uh, the transitive dependency is linked to the third normal form. We will see that aspect also. If you look at the conditions of 1, 2, 3, and if for a particular, uh, because of a particular uh, dependency, if all the three conditions fails, then what happens? A is not part of the left hand side, okay, first condition, it fails. The second one is X is not a super key. That means given any key, with respect to the key, since X is not a super key, that means key is not contained in X. So there are the other two possibilities are either uh, uh, X should be part of the key or X intersection A, I mean key, is non-empty or empty. And the third possibility, A belongs to some key for R, that means A is not part of any key, A is outside key. If all these three conditions are uh, uh, violated, then obviously what happens is there existed either a partial dependency or a transitive dependency. Uh, partial dependency exists when uh, X is part of the key, then that, that becomes a partial dependency. And if X is not part of the key, then the remaining two cases gives us a transitive dependency. And one more important observation here is that uh, if the third condition is satisfied, A belongs to some key of R, then the schema is in BC enough, but still uh, transitive dependency exists. So with respect to this definition of transitive dependency, uh, even though the schema is in BC enough, transitive dependency may exist, but if the schema is not in BC enough, definitely a transitive dependency exists. So with respect to this definition, uh, mere the presence of uh, transfer dependency, we cannot say it is not in BC enough because of the third condition and with respect to the, this definition of transfer dependency. Whereas in some textbooks, the transfer definition of transfer dependency excludes the presence of A in the key. That means uh, A cannot be part of the key. In that case, we can uh, straight away link the transfer dependency with the third normal form in that case. But however, in this uh, lecture, I'm, I'm, uh, with respect to the definition of uh, ordinary transfer dependency that I'm talking, so this condition holds. Once we identify a schema that is not in 3NF, to convert it into 3NF, there is a process called uh, 3NF synthesis, where uh, we start with the set of functional dependencies, and then we find out the minimal cover for, for the given set of functional dependencies. A minimal cover is a proper subset of the given set of function dependencies such that the closure of uh, f is equal to that minimal uh, set. That is, let uh, put it more mathematically, let f be set of function dependencies given, then if g is a proper subset of f such that g plus is equal to f plus and uh, g is minimal with respect to that property, that means no proper set of subset of g has the same property. If it is the case, we call uh, G as a minimal cover. Uh, then, how do we identify the minimal cover? Again, it, it has three steps. Uh, first, uh, the given set of functional dependencies are converted into a standard form of X then A, where A is a single attribute on the right hand side. And then, uh, for each of the functional dependency, you observe the left hand side parts. If there are any redundant attributes, you remove them. And once this step is complete, then remove the redundant function dependency as a whole, if at all they exist, if it can be obtained from the, the existing other set of function dependencies. Uh, the step two and three should not be interchanged. It should, they should be followed in that order only. Once we do the, the three steps, we will be left with the minimal cover. And uh, once we get the minimal cover set of function dependencies, the, the three enough can be constructed uh, by combining the attributes of each functional dependency into a schema. So smaller schema, uh, schemas are built for each functional dependency. And once they are built, we can combine the smaller schemas into bigger schemas until no transitive dependency arises. 
so if we can reach a stage where uh, no further addition or no further union of the schemas can be done we can stop there this is how we can build a uh, third normal form. now we see an example here let us start with the uh, schema r with uh, a b c d f g to g is a schema and let uh, the given set of function dependencies consists of a then a b c d f of course a is a key and uh, c e then a b d then e and c then b are the functional dependencies now to identify the minimal cover first we will uh, in the first step we will convert all the function dependencies into the standard form so that the right hand side is a single attribute and uh, for each of these such uh, functional dependencies in the standard form now let us observe the left hand side part for all of the function dependencies except two the left hand side part is a single attribute so there is no redundancy there and uh, ce then a and pd then e are the only two functional dependencies where the left hand side is, is consistent with two attributes but uh, we cannot reduce uh, either of the attributes either c or e in c then a because uh, i cannot get uh, only from c i cannot get a it doesn't exist similarly only from e i cannot get a so e can also be cannot be removed similarly for a bde also b if i if i can remove b if i can get d d determines e then i can remove but uh, d and the e doesn't arise and uh, similarly i cannot remove d so the second step of removing the attributes on the left hand side do not arise here whereas the third step a then e and uh, a then b can be removed as they can be obtained from the combination of other uh, functional dependencies um, just a combination of uh, if you look at a then b then a then d is there a then bd happens bd, BD then e is there so a trans to dependency can be formed with a then, a then e so a and e can be removed similarly a then b can also be removed because it can be obtained through that combinations of other combinations of the remaining combinations so once i remove that the functional dependencies whatever remains is a minimal cover so these are the functional dependencies that remain a then c a then d a then f a then g c then a b d e then uh, c then b now you consider the schemas for each of the functional dependency so we can have uh, the given uh, set of uh, new set of functional dependencies a c e sorry new set of schemas a c e b d e c b a c a d a f and a g if we try to combine them so a becomes a key uh, because determining all the attributes as far as we can combine them uh, with a so a c d e f g can be combined and uh, the remaining things are b d e is one set and uh, c b is another one so this is the final decomposition there we can stop and uh, finally if you look at the schemas a c d e f g and uh, c b the common attribute is c but uh, c then beholds so it is lossless and once the uh, pair is lossless then um, if i combine those two i'll get a c d e f uh, c b g and together with b d e again b d becomes the a common set of attributes a b d e and the entire set is common so it is lossless and hence the division is lossless and dependency preserving also all the different dependencies are not lost they are, they exist so uh, it's a dependency preserving as well so finally we can conclude that uh, if there is no trans to dependency uh, for non prime attributes and if it is in second normal form we can say that it is in third normal form as well and uh, two more observations are there one is every schema which is in third normal form is uh, definitely in second normal form because third normal form eliminates the partial dependencies and uh, every relation that is bcn is in it is in bcn if it is also in 3 enough because uh, any functional dependency that satisfies any of the two conditions is automatically satisfying any of the three conditions in 3 enough and hence uh, if a schema is in bcnf it is also in 3nf so that's how we can establish a relation among the normal forms uh, some more observations here if uh, all the attributes in a schema are in some or other key then it is uh, straight away in third normal form why because the third condition of the normal form states that the right hand side attribute uh, if it is in any in any key part of the key then it is in third normal form. So if every attribute is in part of some or other key, 
third normal form is automatically satisfied. Similarly, if a relation has only two attributes, then uh, uh, different possibilities are there. That let us say that A and B are the two attributes. Then if there is a A then B function dependency, then A becomes the key and uh, it's only function dependency and uh, it's a super key. Yeah, other, otherwise same, if B then A holds, again B becomes a super key. If no function dependency holds, both the attributes put together forms a key and hence in either case, it is in second number of form. And uh, if a relation, in a relation, every candidate key consists of only single attribute, then obviously it's in second normal form, we can straight away say, because partial dependency case do not arise at all, because there is only one attribute in the candidate key for all the uh, function dependencies, straight away in second normal form. And uh, finally, uh, in all the real-world uh, databases, most of the real-world databases are uh, satisfied with VCNF, that serves the purpose for most of the databases.